wanna play the game with you. Life can be terribly tame if you don't play the game with two. And I wanna play the game with you. And welcome to the Generation Game. Nice to see you. To see you. Nice! And a happy St Andrew's Day, especially for you in Scotland. Oh, and I thought we, we'd do something different tonight. Start off with one of my quick impressions. <laughs> North Sea gas. <laughs> cut us off again. They cut us off again. And now here's the name of the flame. <laughs> Miss Anthea Redford. Oh. 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 oh, you mad. Oh. More, they want more. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah. One. But it's like, I love the way it changes colour and then it sort of sparkles at the top. Yes. Oh, it's like a glass of champagne. It really is. <laughs> yeah, I know. But look, look, it is St Andrew's Day. I mean, what kind of tartan do you call that? Would you believe a red fern tartan? Oh, no? all right then, yeah. Well. I'll tell you what, I'll see what I can run up when I'm off the side. Well, I, I might just try, try and make an effort okay. because they can be very touchy up there. Up there yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's meet the eight who are going to jail it. Bring me on the first couple over there and we'll see who they are and where they're from and everything. Who are they? And this is father and daughter, David Broomhall and Julia Garrett. I see, over here then, if you will, Julia, and stay right there. David, and it's David Broomhall, and you're from South Aston, Birmingham. Correct. Yes, and you were born on a farm. That must have been a bit drafty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 15 years ago, you became a warden for Working Boys Homes. Mm -hmm. I see, and during that time, have had 440 boys living with you all together. I bet they not got through some... Day, no. Oh, not at the same time. No, well, I know no, that. No. I'm not an idiot, am I, Dave? No, no, no. <laughs> well, convince me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, then. Yeah, you can. Uh, but they must have got through a lot of bread and jam in all those years and all those boys. Yes, quite a bit. Yeah, I see. Quite you love cricket, you still play tennis, and you used to press your own meat. <laughs> um, you, did, you did what? Press the meat, yes. Well, did you have any trousers? Boned and pressed the meat. <laughs> And that was much easier than pressing the, the church. So. Oh, I see. <laughs> right, your ambition is to write a book on the past 15 years of your life entitled A Bucket Full. Correct. I won't say of what, because... <laughs> uh, both, both sides. Both sides, OK. Well, it's a nice idea for a title for a book. Over to your daughter now, Julia Garrett, from Northfield in Birmingham. You are a deputy of a, a, a children's home. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see, so it's all rubbed mm -hmm. off in the family. Yeah. Your husband now helps you with the children's home. Mm -hmm. uh, do they watch the Generation Game? Mm -hmm. Some are here and some are watching. Oh, some are here tonight yeah. and some are watching at home? Yes. Fine. Well, would you like to say, borrow my camera. That's my own hello. personal camera, camera three. Hello. Say hello to them. Can I say hello to Francesca, who was too poorly to come? And oh, oh, yes. Paul O'Brien, Ellen Hospital. Oh, fine. Is there a monster there, a real monster? No, they're all gorgeous. They're all gorgeous. Yeah. All right, but a special mention to Francesca. Hope you enjoy it tonight. Lovely. You. Right, you like folk music, you play the guitar, and you watch Max play rugby every Saturday afternoon, and you swim and you play tennis. I do. Well, that's certainly enough. Lovely to have you. You look, you look nice contestants. If you just move over here, we'll meet our next two, Anthea, who are... And here we have Terry and Roger Downs. I see. Okay. And, uh, and over here. And it's Terry Downs, mother and son, called Terry Downs. No relation to uh, the boxer. Uh, no, none no. at all. So is that a nickname then? Uh, it's an abbreviation. An abbreviation, yeah. I see then. And you're from Cheltenham, Gloucestershire. You work part-time in an office and you also help with brownies in Sunday school. And you're a scorer for a local cricket team. And when you were younger, you joined the Air Force for two years and became a member of the physical training team and toured the country with them. Are you still very physically minded? Oh, yes, very. You think there's enough physical contact? You know... <laughs> You can't say a thing these days. <laughs> but Terry, you know what I mean? I mean, do you think people are, are, are too physical? I don't think people are physical enough, do you? No, I don't. But, but do you still do your exercises and all that? Uh, not very often. Not very obviously. You're even letting me down as well. <laughs> anyway, your husband's, uh, your husband's name is Jim. Yes. Does he do it? Oh, yes. He plays cricket. <laughs> 
Work that out for yourselves. Right. <laughs> you have two sons and a daughter who is a mad Wombles fan. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, she might grow out of it. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> now over to your son, Roger. Come a bit nearer, Roger. And you're from Cheltenham as well. That's right. And in the summer, you play cricket for a local team. Oh, uh, does yeah, your mother score fiddle, for you? Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I bet you're top scorer, aren't you? <laughs> Oh dear. And in the winter you play darts. Yes. Fine. You have a qualification in first aid and you were awarded the Duke of Edinburgh Award and went to Buckingham Palace to receive it. That's right, last did, November. Did the Duke of Edinburgh present yes, to you? We were all did he say anything presenting to you? Uh, no, but he spoke to the group of us who were there from yeah, the Yeah, right. Lovely place, isn't it? Not oh. bad at all. Not bad. Love their front room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, well, now we're ready now for game number one. All right, then, now, if you'll just pop over there to your lectern, and if you'll come over with me here, we'll show you what it's all about. You've got something to do with a bit of writing down there. Now, our game is not called Trees. <laughs> Although it could have been, you see, because it's got something to do with the game. So I'm not going to say any more. I'm just going to say, can we meet... The game will explain itself. Can we meet our first mystery guest star? There we are. Never mind all that. <laughs> Never mind all that. There we are, and there he is. All right, now, now, what breed of dog do you think that is? What breed? There he is. Is it a he or a she? A he. Oh, with the long hair, you can't tell, you see, yes. <laughs> Fine. But he's very beautiful. And his name? His name's Caliph. Caliph. Oh, a lovely name. Write down what kind of dog you think that is. All right, then. Thank you, my dear. Lovely. Let's have mystery star number two. <laughs> show so far. <laughs> Charming the dirty little beast. <laughs> What's his name, my dear? Santa. Santa, yeah, right, you'll get a right clout of a Santa. <laughs> you did it better than rehearsal. Good boy, right. <laughs> OK, what do you think that is? All right, then, you've written down something? Jolly good. Over here, then, if you will. Is there a beauty? That's a little he as well. Well, we know it's a he, don't we, yes? <laughs> Over here, then. Can we have mystery star number three, please? <laughs> There ah, there we are then. That's lovely, that's lovely. And walk him round so that we can all have a look. You've seen his face over there, have you? And come back here. And, the, and this is a little lady, is it? Yes. And what's her name? Sarah. Sarah. She's a beauty. All right then. Not very sure of me. Right. <laughs> Write down what you think it is. There's Sarah. That's lovely. OK then, if we could have mystery guest number four. There he is in all his glory. Ah, there we are. What a lovely truck. I like the way those feet go out like that. Beautiful. Did you manage to have a, a look at his face? I can see what you've got now, but... Uh, <laughs> there we are, then. Another proud he. And what's his name? Simon. Uh, Simon. All right, Simon. Lovely. I love the ears. They're driving mad. Yeah. But you can't half-wash the floor quick. Right. <laughs> OK, then. Could we have mystery number five, please? <laughs> Mystery dog. Here she is, another little lady dog. Yes, a bit timid at the moment, but there she is. She's beautifully looked after, as all these dogs are. They're in peak of condition. And what's her name? Ella. Ella, like Fitzgerald. I see, fine. She's a love, isn't she? Little lies. There we are. Have you written down something? Good. And over there as well, fine. OK, could we have number six now, please? There we are. A very aristocratic lady, this one, yes. Very lovely. Yes, there we are. Now, what do you think that is? All right, then. She is gorgeous. And what's her name? She's Faye. Faye? Oh, yes. That's an unusual name for a dog. This Faye. Yeah. German for a fairy. Oh, German for fairies? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> I suppose it might be handy for some people to know. But, yeah. Tell by the walk. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you very much for showing us, Faye. And could we have the last one, number seven, please? Now then, let's have a look at this. There we are. Look at that little walk. I love the way the feet go up. Oh, that. And is this a little he? Yes, it is a he. Fine. And what's his name? Impo. Impo. Looks more like Ipo to me. <laughs> but there we are. 
There we are. Have a guess at that one. I call it... I call it breakfast sausage. <laughs> there we go. Oh, he's lovely. He's lovely. All right, then, if you'll just go back there now, and we'll start from the top again. Anthea, are you there? Yes. And we'll do a bit of marking. Now, would you go back there, number one? And the owner of this dog is Mrs Biddy Tuck. It's harder than pronouncing the dog name. Biddy Tuck. <laughs> But thank you for bringing Callie for long. And what did you get over there, Anthea? Uh, for number one, we put an Afghan hound. And we've got an Afghan hound, and that is absolutely right. Thank you very much, Biddy. Two points each. Thank you very much for bringing him along. OK, and the next one... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hope he's finished for the night. Right. <laughs> I'll take him walkies. Right. <laughs> Now then, what have you got for that one? And for our little friend, we've got a chihuahua. Chihuahua, yeah, chihuahua. And I've, we've got chihuahua as well. And you even spelt it right. Very well indeed. That's, and this is Mrs Rita Brampton who brought that along. Thank you very much for bringing uh, Santa, wasn't it? Off you go and walk wide of the tree, will you, dear? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Fine. <laughs> OK, so that's two points each again for that. Now the next one... Uh, what have you got for this, and Anthea? And for number three, a wild, wire-haired terrier. A wide, wired-haired terrier. Yeah. And we've got a fox terrier. Well, you're both wrong because it is, in fact, an Airedale. An Airedale. <laughs> and we thank Mrs Connie Tucker for bringing along beautiful Sarah for us to see. Thank you. No points for the Airedale. I thought that would have been quite easy. All right, then, the next one coming up now. Here he is, Simon. Fine lad he is. He's a beauty. What have you got for Simon? And for number four, Simon Beagle. A beagle? Yes. Oh. Yeah, they've just said a basset hound. Oh, so no. it's a bit late. We've got basset hound here, or licorice all sort. <laughs> no matter which way you want to call it. But then we do thank Mrs Joan Wells for bringing uh, Simon along. Absolute beauty. A basset hound. Lovely. <laughs> And moving along to number five, what have we got, Anthea? And this is, uh, we've put a whippet. We've got a whippet as well, yes. and this is Miss Jane Wilton Clark. Actually, her mother shows the dog and is the dog's owner, but uh, Ella's yours for the night, isn't she, Jane? Thank you for bringing Ella along for us, the little whippet. All right, then, now this is a difficult one we thought to throw into you. In fact, the last two are difficult ones. But there she is, Faye. What have you got, Anthea? And for my beautiful face one, we've unfortunately got a German greyhound. And she is lovely. A German yes. greyhound? <laughs> a stupid idea. <laughs> Might do this better. We've got a Labrador. <laughs> Could be a very ill Labrador. <laughs> I suppose I'm sorry, uh, Mrs. Eileen Skelton Fortune, to have your dog insulted like this, but actually, it's, it is a saluki. Not a sukiyaki, a saluki. Thank you very much, dear, and she is a beauty. Thank you, Faye. Bye bye then. And the last one, I'm dying to know what they've got for this. <laughs> I've just looked down here, but I'll say that till the end. Right. What have you got for this one, Anthea? Well, for my favourite, we've got a baldy hound. <laughs> a baldy hound? Yeah. And we've got Spotted Dick. <laughs> I'm, a good to, I'm good by to take two points off you for being so cheapy. But in fact, it is a Chinese crested. That's right, and thank you, Mr. Bob Brandon, for bringing along Impo. But weren't they all lovely? <laughs> there we are. Let's have a look at the old scoreboard. There we are. Come down here, my loves. David and Julia, six. Terry and Roger, eight. Our next game is called Where Do They Live? All right, then. So, first of all, let's have a look at this. There we are. If you look down there, you'll see some famous places. Famous residents. All right, then. There's one there. And moving along there, who lives in that place? And then who lives here? And this place here, who resides there? And there we are, another place. All <laughs> famous places where people live. Now let's have a look at the other board. And here we have lots of different people. You see, we have two couples, but then we also have eight other people. Now thing we want to do, very, very simply, you see there's a few there, the bogus ones, we want you to put the right face in the middle of the right residence. Get to your boards. You only have 30 seconds to do this. So you have 30 seconds starting from now. 
and put the face or the people right in the middle of the picture. All right then? Right in the middle. And if you're not sure, at least have a guess. You've got 20 seconds left, so you're not doing too bad for time. La la la, do 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 Good. Oh, we'll bung that one on. Have you got it in your hand? That's it. OK. Straighten up the boards. And if you're there, Anthea will then yes. do a bit of marking. Now, the first place is the Lambeth Palace. Not the Hammersmith Palace, the Lambeth Palace. And, of course, the Archbishop of Canterbury, that's where he lives. And there he is, right in the middle of it. So you have two points for that. How about you, Anthea? And we have two points. Well done. So it's yes. a good start to the game. All right, then. Moving down, we have... We have the Checkers, it's called. That's Checkers. And Douglas Hume doesn't live at Checkers anymore. <laughs> he used to, I know he used to. <laughs> but he lost the lease. Right. <laughs> Actually, it should have been the primaries are now. Wilson, there he is there, Harold Wilson, so no points for us. How about you, Anthea? Oh, we've demoted her. No, the Queen doesn't live there the either. The Queen? <laughs> the Queen at Checkers. <laughs> I think, she, I think she does a bit of work there sometimes, yeah. But that's no good. That's no good. No points for that at all. So you let yourselves down there. And, of course, number 11, Downing Street. There we have. And there is Dennis Healy, eyebrows as well. That's where he is. Cooks up all the good news to give us. So two points for us. How about you, Anthea? And nothing for us. We put James Callaghan. Ah, nothing for you. All right, then, fine. Now, oh, no. That's the mansion house. <laughs> And Her Majesty doesn't live at the Mansion House. <laughs> it could be good as checkers. But don't get over there. The Lord Mayor of London lives there, and it's Sir Henry Murray Fox. So no points for that, and I'm sorry, Your Majesty. How, right. <laughs> Moving along, how, about, how did you get on with um, that one? We're right. Two points. You've got two points yes. there. Well done, your side. All right, then. And moving up here, this actually is a picture of Oak Grove House. And uh, this is where Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips lives. Actually, a little royal message, Mark could do with a bit more creosote on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd mention it. Right. But we're wrong. Princess Alexandria and Angus Ogilvy do not live there. They probably visit there, but they don't live there, so no points for us. How about you? And um, two points for us. We're right. You're right? Yes. All right, then, moving down now to the last one, Balmoral Castle, that is. And there again, of course, these lovely people will visit there, but they don't live there as such. It's another one of the Queen's uh, residences. So how about you, Anthea? No, no made, nothing for us? No, nothing for us either. Princess Alexandra and Angus Ogilvy do not live at Balmoral. There we are. No. But very interesting. We hope you played the game at home. Lovely. <laughs> but, and let's have a look at the old score. Oh, dear! David and Julia, 12. Terry and Roger, 12, a tiebreaker. Well, now, with a tiebreaker, I'll read you out a question. Thank you, Anthea. And it's the first one from either team who answers the question and answers it correctly will win and go through to the next and um, the semi-final. Right, the tiebreaker coming up. Name the island off the toe of Italy. Sicily. Sicily. Yes, just there. Oh, you were very, very close. Very close indeed. We're sorry for you, yeah? Very close indeed. There we are. And we'll see you in our semi final, which will be coming up. And your tanker. Uh, sorry, sorry. That's all right. Carry on. All right then. Thank you very much indeed. That lovely people. Whoa. There we are. And our next contestant, Cynthia, are. And here we have Edith and Stephen Cooper. I see. Over here, if you will. Stephen and Edith, and it's mother and son. And you're from Scunthorpe. Yes. In Lincolnshire. Well, you South are... Humberside now. Actually. What's it? South Humberside. Oh, South now. Humberside yes. it is now. Thank Since you for the change. There's some more duff in information <laughs> I'm getting. But anyway, fine. You're a housewife, and you used to help in your husband's shoe shop. Yes. What do you do? Kick you out? Well, yes. <laughs> I see. And you sing in the local church choir, and you're also a member of the Scunthorpe Little Theatre Club. And, w and with the club, you visited Lüneburg in Germany, which is Scunthorpe's twin town. Yes, it is. Well, fancy there true. being another Scunthorpe in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mind you, they gave it the right name, Lüneburg. Right. <laughs> 
Sorry, folks. Right. You met your husband while you were going out with his brother. Is that right? Yes. And you thought he was horrible <laughs> when you first met him. But what was so horrible about him, about his brother? Oh, I still think he's horrible sometimes. Oh, you do? <laughs> but you think the, the, the brother is now more horrible yeah. than your husband? Yeah, well, what a tangled web you do live in. Right, over now to your son. It's Stephen uh, yeah. Cooper from Scunthorpe uh, in South Humberside. <laughs> right, you manage your father's shoe shop. Oh, yes, all mouth and tongue. You, uh, <laughs> you were in the RAF for three years working on teleprinters. Well, I was in the RAF for three years working on teleprinters. I wondered who was at the other end. <laughs> really, I was. Really? Yeah, honestly. Uh, well, what rank did you get in that? SAC. Oh. Oh, I, I was a corporal. Oh. Oh. Yeah, fine. Still got the scars to prove it. Um, you call yourself a golf fanatic. Well, that's the best thing in the world you can call yourself. You, you have two children, a boy and a girl. Oh, you don't play on Sundays then. But you, uh, you enjoy... You enjoy all mookis. It, music! Music! <laughs> Moo kiss. Except pop, you like tread jazz, and you used to play the fiddle as a boy. Did you bring it with you? <laughs> no. Thank God. Right. <laughs> and we'll meet. We'll meet our last contestants who are. And this is Yvonne Bredo and Norman Corley. I see. Fine. It's father and daughter. And first of all, Norman Corley, you're from Old Colwyn. Yes. In North Wales. You are originally from Clitheroe. Uh, Lancashire and are a customs and excise officer and have been doing this job for 27 years. You've got the face for it as yeah. well. <laughs> you, he really has, hasn't he? I mean, I'm getting nervous and I've got nothing on me. I'm going to get the watch out of the way for a start. Going all like this? Right, you notice the watch. <laughs> right, don't make me nervous. You, you've been married for 30 years yes. and you have seven, duty, uh, seven uh, children. children. Yes. So you do believe in free duty then? <laughs> Oh, duty-free. In 1972, you were the mayor of Colwyn Bay. Yes. Well, that, congratulations. I think you're the first mayor we've all ever had on the show. Well, cheer up. We've really cheer. <laughs> but you are. I, think, I can't yes. remember. Have we had a, 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 I don't think we ever have. We've had a few funny ladies, you know, but we've never... <laughs> actually had a mayor. Right. Over now to your daughter, Yvonne Bredo. Was Bre Bredo. Bredo. Yes. Bredo. I wonder about, we wondered about that. From, also from Colwyn Bay. You were also born in Clitheroe, and by the time you were 21, you were a sister on surgical wards. Yes. Well, that's a big achievement. And when you got married, you moved to Ormskirk and nursed there for 18 months. Yes. Missing parts one and two of midwifery, but going into, straight into part three when you had a baby of your own in 1972. Yes. Oh, lovely. And another one in 1973. <laughs> that was quick together. Eating what? with him. Yes, I think you were, dear. <laughs> and you and the family then moved to Colwyn. Good idea, that. Yes. Change of air slows them down. <laughs> 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 and uh, you <laughs> Your husband, John, is in the ambulance service. Well, he needs to be, doesn't he? <laughs> it's all right for him sitting out, you know, outside he's got the ambulance. He's all right, isn't it? Oh, well, that's, we'll give him our love anyway. We're now ready for game number three, which is your first game, and it's easy, the first part. Just come over here and sit yourselves down. All right, then. We're going to show you something that I've never seen before. I didn't know this was the way it's done. And it's oh. keeping up a little bit with our sort of St Andrew's Day, a little bit of a tribute to Scotland. Although, let me say straight away, uh, we are not going to show you anything to do with the kill. We're showing you how to pleat, but pleat with, with, with tartan material. It isn't the way actual kilts are made, so don't send us all the letters, please, <laughs> my loves. All right, then. So, first of all, let's meet the very talented hands of Mr. Roy Kwama. No, Kwama! 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 Sorry. All right. I'll do the name again. It is Roy Kwaman. Right? That's right. Right, yes. quite. So I've told them about the Scottish thing, and you know, we don't need any letters about that, but this is the commercial way how to make a pleated skirt or, or semi kilt, should we that's say. Right, right. So if we'll just come round here and uh, in your own time, Roy, show us exactly how the thing is, because this is quite a complicated thing and a very wonderful thing to watch. Will you two stay together here and will you come round the other side of me? That's it. Then I can keep you in your pairs and I know where you are. There we are. In your own time, Roy, away you go and make us a Completed kilt or semi kilt, should we say? <laughs> Off comes the rubber band, and this is sort of uh, brown paper or what is it? Brown uh, thick cardboard. Bra brown thick cardboard. All right then, that's what all that is about. Weight goes on at the other end. 
There we are. Oh, um, <laughs> really got you there, didn't he? And on goes the tart material. Straight in the lines. Straight in the lines. Making sure it's all along there. That's it. Let this goes. And the weight. Oh, see that? Did you see that? Yeah, that's what it's all about. Did you see that? Mm. Just like that. I'll try. That's it. And rolls it up. There we are. And on we go. The rubber band. And that's it. Now you see all the pleats in there? You see all that? Let's show them all at home, Roy. There we are, and that's how all the pleating is done. There we are. OK. Now, what happens, the process after that, Roy, is what? Well, it goes in the steam box for ten minutes. For ten minutes? In the steam box? Yes. Oh, I see. Yes. And then, when you take it out, you can put it on and you've got, you've got a kilt? No, you have to wait at least 15 minutes for the cool off. Oh, cool off? Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, especially if you don't wear anything under your coat. <laughs> Could be very nasty. <laughs> the Sassanax would probably do it that way, but never mind. OK, then. Well, that's absolutely beautiful. And uh, could we have a look now, darling? So Anthea's now back in this lovely, which is for, from your firm, and we thank you so much. I said I'd done something. Like yes, of family. course. It is beautiful. And feather your pleats. Dear, yeah, feather your pleats. Are. Feather your pleats of the black. Isn't that Isn't beautiful? Lovely? I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Can we keep it? Yes, Bruce. Oh, what a lovely... Oh, yeah. Well, if you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> do you? <laughs> <laughs> it looks lovely, darling. And we thank you very much again, Roy. Wasn't that lovely? <laughs> so, 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 now we come here, and Roy's going to lurk at the back, because if you don't complete this, he wants to at least see the style that you do the thing. Now, pick your side if you're going to do it together as a team. You want to go this side? Oh, you this side. You want to go this side. So you come round the other side. Which side do you want to get? You want to get this side? You get round the other side. OK, fine. That's it. That makes it fair. Then you know what you're doing. So you've got about well over a minute, starting from now. That's it, that's all right, let's hold on, let's hold on now. Now get the... <laughs> 30 seconds you've got left, so you're not doing too badly. 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, you put it in the wrong place, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> all right then, 15 seconds you've got... <laughs> <I'm off. laughs> 15 seconds you got left. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> ah, there we are. I bet they're loving this in Scotland. What are you doing? <laughs> 10 seconds left. 10 seconds left. <laughs> right? Time to stay. There you are. Looks like a dead eat to me. <laughs> Come round here, Roy. Will you just break away there and let's have a look? Where where were they, Roy? Well, I mean, where were they? Well, Bruce, <laughs> it's, uh, it's upside down, as you can see. Upside down? Yes. Uh, there's um, no pleats in it at all. No pleats in it at all. <laughs> not even a crease. <laughs> no pleats, not even a crease. Yeah. So, marks out of ten. Well, for effort, six. Six out of ten, yeah, yes. for being here. And they did get confused. <laughs> a very difficult thing to do. We were asking an awful lot. Round here, if you will, Roy. You must see this at home. Look at this, look. <laughs> it's just in one big lump there, isn't it? <laughs> look, I mean, where is it supposed to be? All over the shop, a bit hanging there. Well, what do well, you think? Well, Bruce, uh... <laughs> don't know where to start. Well, it? again, it's upside down. Upside like, down. Yes. The same points, do you think, are fair or what? The, um, I think so, didn't you? Yeah, I think it's the fairest way to get out of it. Yes. I think they both made as big a hash yes. of it. <laughs> All right, then. Yes. But there we are. But a difficult game. But we thought you'd like to see how it was done. And it is a fascinating thing. And I'm sure it's been lovely to watch at home as well. Thank you very much, Roy Kwan. <laughs> lovely. All right. <laughs> So 
no real harm done. Do you agree? Yeah. No yeah. real harm done. We're ready now for our last game, which is called Close-Up Zone. All right, then? Close-Up Zone. Now, if you'll just have a look behind us, the people at home will be watching our screen at the moment. There we are, all these faces. You see, just a little part of a face. Two eyes there in the forehead, a bit of the nose. Just one eye there and the hair in the forehead. Down here, just the lower part of the face there, just the eyes there and the eyebrows, and there we are. And just the eyebrows there again and the eyes. All we want you to do is on the yellow pieces of paper there, write down the name of the person you think that is. That's all you've got to do. Get to your boards, if you will. You've got 30 seconds to do this, starting from now. <laughs> The north, the south, the east, Alright, okay, time's up. What's okay? <laughs> Whatever you put there, I don't know. I'm going to have to ask you in a moment. All right then. Now, Anthea, what have you got over there for your first one? And for number one, we've got Kojak. Kojak. Now, what is this supposed to Chaplin, be? Come to me. Chaplin. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Chaplin. Well, you've got Kojak. We've got Chaplin, and it is <laughs> Kojak or Telly Savalis. So it's T Telly Savalis is his name, but Kojak. I'll give you a point for Kojak. I think that's fair. All right. So, moving down to... What have you got for number two? Uh, no, is this... What's the... Dennis Healy. I yes, and we've got Dennis Healy. Healy. What do you think? Is it right, do you think? Yes. yes. Yes, Healy is right, absolutely. There he is, thinking up something else for us. Right. <laughs> now then, number three, what have you got for number three? And for number three, P. Clark, we can only be Petula Clark. Yes, and we've got Pet Clark as well. They're very good at this one. This is a bit easy, I think. There we are, Pet Clark as well, two points each. Well done up to yet. And what about number four? Uh, number four, Joan Crawford. Joan... <laughs> 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 So near, isn't it? <laughs> so near. We've got Lucille Ball. <laughs> and it was, in fact, Ken Dodd. <laughs> How'd you feel, Ken? <laughs> Sick as a pig. Right. <laughs> there, we, there we are, then. Moving along. That was a lovely one. That was worth waiting for, that. Right. What have they got for this one? And for number five, Kissinger. And we've got Kissinger as well. And it is Kissinger. Well done. Both of you for that. Two points each. And what about this one? Oh, well, oh, this one they've put Sydney Smith, but I've just heard a whisper saying Cyril Smith. Oh, well, we've got Cyril Smith. We've got Cyril Smith, which is definitely right. Uh, one, one point, point for, for you. Us. All right, yes. just one point for you, two points for you. That's the fairest way for that one. All right, then, but well done. A good game. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Oh, I'm not going to look at the scoreboard again. <laughs> It's a tiebreaker, oh, folks. Yes. Another tiebreaker. It's the night of the tie. And I've got the tiebreakers, I believe. Now, wait a minute. We haven't got all muddled up with my cards. We've never had this happen before, have we? All right, then, if you'll just get a bit closer together, if you will, I'll be with you in a second. All right, then, now, as I said before to the other people, it's the first one who answers from each team will win the tiebreaker. All right, then? Now, then, in which film does the character Scarlett O'Hara appear? Gone with the ball. Oh, yes, you at the end there. <laughs> Zip up. Very tight again. Very clever yeah. contestants tonight, really are. We're sorry to lose right. you. Oh, that, that really is a shame. Anyway, we but have congratulations to, to you. <laughs> well done, well oh, done. That's lovely. There we are. Some lovely Thank perfume you. and your tankard, which will be engraved. And okay. we'll see you in our semi final, which will be coming up very, very soon. All right, then. We are now ready for the semi-final, and it should be a humdinger between Terry and Roger and Norman and Yvonne. Well, good luck with our semi-final. Uh, you've seen just a little bit of what's been going on over there, but um, what I suppose the famous, most famous lane in the whole of the British Isles is Petticoat Lane. And uh, I've loved it down there since I was a kid. I was enthralled by the whole atmosphere of the lane. I mean, it's not just a place to go and buy something. To me, it's an entertainment. And we have one of the greatest entertainers ever to come from the paved stones of that famous lane. We welcome to our show, Mr. Jack Joseph. <laughs> To 
bobs, shillings, ninepences, the entire stock's got to go. We're going away tonight for two weeks holiday. I'm clearing the stocks. I've got to do that. I'm not sure if the country will be here when we get back. <laughs> Look, see these? Car rugs or travelling rugs. If you're going courting, use them as ground sheets. <laughs> They're worth a pound, 15, 10 bob, 7 bob would be cheap. How many of these we got left, Tom? About a dozen or so yeah. left, sir. Show us a lot, I'll clear the lot. Actually, these were advertised on television two or three weeks ago. That's right, what sir. was that programme? Please fight. Please fight. Will you <laughs> think you're driving me mad? Give us some all up out the way. Here, candle wicks. Very good if you smoke in bed. Up there, two bob each. Sleeping bags. You've got one of these sleeping bags at home, haven't you? Yeah, she washes up as well. Doesn't That's she? right. Get down there, give us the stuff. Up. Two bob shillings, ninepence sheets. You'll never get these prices again. Worth a pound. Fifteen. Ten bob. Seven bob. Five shillings would be cheap. Do you know what sizes these well, are? Why not, sir? They've all got mixed. Well, can you sort them out then? Right. Give us them all up here, Tom. Right. Here, have a look at these. Casa poo poo. Casa poo poos. <laughs> these are. I tell you this. I was selling these in a market about six months ago. Great big car came up, and uh, Richard Burton got out. He had a few words with Elizabeth. They weren't friendly. He bought her one of these. One exactly. It's the truth. It isn't that the truth? That's right, sir. You're a blimmin' liar. <laughs> I wish you'd stop it. I'm sorry, come. He's, he's been like this since he bumped into Lionel Blair. Give us a kiss. All right, that's enough. <laughs> here, here, come here, Casa Poo Poo. Open it up, the pattern goes right over your bed. Right over the blimmin' bed. Just bed. like that, it's a big... Come out of there. We're on tele... What are you doing? Give us the stuff up. Here, what, madam, would you mind stop talking? You haven't stopped talking since you've been here. Have you got a single bed or a double bed? Double, good, because you'll never get your mouth in a single bed. <laughs> here, there's one, come here. There's two, one lady, who would give me a pound? Here, madam, hold your money. One, two, here, I'll give you that on top. Tom, instead of charge her a pound, charge the lady, go on. Ten shillings for the lot. Well, you don't oh, look very man. happy, madam. Here, hang on, here, I'll come here. You don't look very happy. That on top. Here, that on top. Go on, and the whole lot. Fifteen bob. Sell day! Sell day! That's my kind of performance. Ah, oh, it was beautiful, beautiful. You could feel the atmosphere of the lane. Thank you very much. But I tell you, so, do me a favour then. Can I give him a clout as well? Because yeah, he didn't know I've mucked you up a few I times. I know, go on. It Tried to draw a knife on me there, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, right, give him a clout for me. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Take that. There's plenty more where that came from. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, his chopping block, I got it right, his chopping block, Tom Callum. We thank Tom as well. <laughs> Don't go away, Jack. We want you to be a judge, because who should know better than you how this should be done? All right, then? So don't go away. All right, then? Fine. Well, now. Here come it's toss up time! Toss up time! <laughs> I love all that, I love it. Right, heads or tails, my love? Heads. Heads it is. Do you want to go first or second? We'll second, try the box. Please. Second? Second? All right then, so in you go then. And just think about what you've got to do. It is a memory game, this. A memory game. All right then, all the little bits. Now who's going to do the selling? Who's oh, going to do the chop? You'll do the selling. Up you go there then. Try and get the whole feeling that he did. Do some, you know, play it your own way. Sail day, sail day. Let's go down Petticoat Lane again. Sound day! Sound day! Hey, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Here we are. Here we are. Tanner, half a crown, five bob, ten bob, quit the lot. You were giving it away. Rob, stump, stick it up, keep the babies, bob, bob, and strawberry. Bob. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. And double size or something. <laughs> we're rock and bound. Hope had it with him. Who will give me five bobs, half a crown, half a crown? No, keep your, keep your money in your purse, madam. How much for the candle wick? Good for smoking in bed. Fifteen bob for the lot. Is it fifteen bob? Is that right? Shut up. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. See, one of those babies on television? Yes, they, oh, they were on television. I've forgotten the line. Please file. Please, oh, please file. Oh, shut up. Um, here we are. Straight from Caravan Centre. By gum, it's a midget, isn't it? Half a crown. Who'll give me two bob? Two bob, madam. What is it? What is it? I've no idea. Sleeping bag. <laughs> Sleeping bag. The zip, the zip nearly works. 
There we are. How much is that? <laughs> Genuine, isn't it? Real nylon. Shut up. There we are. And a Casa Poo Poo lug. If you want to poo poo in the Casa, this is what I'm for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she's here. Come on, give me those. Now, where's your finish? Here we are. Who'll we'll give it 25 bob? 25 bob. Anybody? Anybody? Here, all that. Here, I'll put this on. Here we are. That was it. That was marvellous. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Super. Well, have we got the other two over there? Could we have them out, Anthea? There we are. Out you come, my loves. All right, now, who's going to be the salesman? Oh, Roger. Roger's going to do all that, and you're going to get the clouts, are you? Yes. Now, again, all right, then be careful with your mother, but not too careful. Now, then, you know, it's a memory game. There's your, your blanket. Remember all the things you said about the blanket, the candle wick, the sleeping bag, and finish up with the casapoopa. All right, then. Frung maybe a few sheets in now and again, but up to you. All right, then. Away you go. Uh, let's pop down. Shall we go and pedicure lane again? Yes, why not? There we go. These lovely blankets, look at them here. Never seen them finer in your life. Come on, all sorts of colours. Just what you always wanted, ladies. To you, ladies, a pound. No, not a pound. Come on, ten bob. You can't go ten bob. Give them for five. No? no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> They're worth that. Try this blankets, thing. Weren't those blankets on television? No. These were. <laughs> <laughs> Candlewick by the dozen. <laughs> Sleeping bag, ladies, for those cold nights in Newcastle. I've got one of those at home. What's that? I've got one of those at home. Use it for the husband, do you? When you're out in the woods, no rheumatism. Come on, get on with you. <laughs> Come on, turn this lot up. We've got things to sell. Come on, people, come to the sale. Now, how about a casa poo poo? <laughs> uh, a Richard Burton casa poo poo. <laughs> All sorts of colours. We've got a blue one on here, we've got a blue one somewhere else. <laughs> Just the thing. Come on, I don't want them there over here. Come on with you. Now, how much are you going to give me for this casa poop? We're not five bob again. Come on, they're worth more than that. Ten bob I'll take for starters. To you, lady, ten. I'll give you eight. Does it go right over the bed? No. Right, oh, right. Right, right over the bed. No, no. Come on, out of there. What are you doing in there? Not a single bed. <sighs> Whip. <laughs> Well, that was a lot of fun watching him, eh? Right. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, there we are. What do you think? Is Mark's out of 20? Well, it's very close. Um, I think these two are very good. Yes. But the thing is, if the blanket wasn't on television, of course it was. Of course was it was on television. The blanket was on television. So I Police give, five. That's it. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give them 16. 16 yes. out of 20. Yes. Well done. Very like well done indeed. All yes. Right. And of course, the customs and excise, but hang on. <laughs> Take your ring off. <laughs> He's already had a go at my wife. <laughs> yeah, right. I only thought this in this one. <laughs> I give him 18 because he was very, very good. He was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> very well done. He did a marvellous job. A marvellous job. There we are. There we are. Well, let's have a look at the old scoreboard. Terry and Roger, 16. Norman and Yvonne, 18. So there we are. Very, very close again, but very, very well done. And Jack? It's been lovely to trip down Petticoat Lane again. Thank you. Really, you're a lovely character. Thanks, right. And see you again soon. Yes, and best. good luck with everything. Thank you. Mom! <laughs> You've been lovely. Your drink mixer you, and Roger. your heater. Lovely, okay. Thanks. All right, then. Sorry to lose you. And here we are. <laughs> and it's father versus daughter. Now then. Well. 
There again, like the tiebreakers, the first one answers the question and win the point. Three points to be won altogether. The first question coming up. This week is the centenary of which famous statesman's birth? Churchill. Churchill. You're one up, Dad. Right, one up. Second question. Who has now assumed the title of Miss World? Uh, Miss South Africa. You're Annie L. Creel. What was that? Annie L. Creel. Annie L. Creel. Annaline Creel. Yes. That's it, fine. Miss South Africa. So it's one all. Well done, Yvonne. The, next, the last question. What kind of meat is served as schnitzel? Shh. Veal. Veal. You're right, Dad. <laughs> Straight in there. And what a, what a loud audience we had tonight. There we are. Oh, there we are. All right then, Yvonne, but I'm sure you'll go home with a few things if Dad's... Uh... <laughs> Take these sliding doors away, please. Now, before we start, have you got anything to declare? <laughs> You're trying to get all this stuff through, are you? Right. Now then, you've got 45 seconds to have a look. Starting from now. And on the conveyor belt tonight, an oil lamp, a floral encasement, a stone flagon of wine, rosé, a soda siphon and an ice bucket, a cuddly dog, a wall clock, a fan heater, binoculars, an electric tea maker and timer, a tennis game, a rather rude picture. Ladies' makeup. A sun lamp. A carpet. A microscope outfit. Salad bowl and servers. Coffee set. A collection of children's annuals. There we are. Round you come, if you will, Norman. And keep thinking all the time. All right, then, keep thinking. Everything you remember, you will take home with you tonight. And you've got 45 seconds to recount your thoughts starting from now. Lamp. A lamp. A glass thing. A glass uh, thing. A barrel of booze. A barrel of booze. Booze equipment, siphon, Booze et equipment, the siphon, and, and all that sort of stuff. Tea maker. Ele electrical tea a maker. A dog. Um, cuddly dog. Yeah, uh, blimey. Uh, woodwork. Coffee some woodwork. Set. A coffee, coffee set. set. Uh, a rug. Uh, some rugs, uh, yes, some rugs. Flower thing. A flower uh, thing. Picture. A picture. Uh, yeah. There was some. Did you go racing at all? Uh, yeah, binoculars. Binoculars. Oh. Yes, you don't want to lose those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some kiddies books. Kiddies books. Yeah, kiddies books. Uh, electric blankets. Yeah. And there was uh, a there was a clock. A clock. Uh, there was a clock. Uh, watch. And there was some some perfume. Perfume. Yeah. Uh, there was some perfume. Oh. Woodwork. A wood bowl. Yes. A heater. Oh yeah, heater. A heater. And what was that? Uh, An electrical thing. Uh, electrical thing. What was that, Yvonne? A microscope thing. Yes. Yeah, it was That's the uh, right, infrared. Yes. Didn't he do well? Well. <laughs> That's it, Yvonne. How about it? He got the lot. Got the lot. Hudson's the next time. 